Hello, welcome back to MG Economics. I'm Isaac Demidayo. So today we'll continue our discussion on the assumptions of the least squares methods, the assumptions of the OLS. So last class we went through the first six assumptions. So we'll conclude that uh, we conclude our discussion on the assumptions in this video. So we're going to the next four years in this video. So the first uh, the first one here, number seven, is about homoscedasticity. The second one, number eight, is about autocorrelation. The third one is about zero covariance. And the last one here is about multicollinearity. So what does these terms mean? Well, how do, how, how do they how do they affect uh, assumptions of the OLS? The first one, we have homoscedasticity. Basically, what homo, homo means equal and scedasticity means variance. So when you're talking about homoscedasticity, homoscedasticity simply refers to equal variance of the error term. So it applies to the error term, the UI, as the disturbance, the noise variable and all that. So there must be equal variance of the error term. That is one of the assumptions of the OLS. That is the variation of the estimated function from the true line you know we have our true y which is this y and we have the estimated y which is the expected value of y given the expected value of y given xi so the variation of this guy from the true value of y must be equal across different observations of the regressor so which means our ui now UI, you know, the error term, the variation is defined as this minus minus this. So, what this homoscedasticity is talking about is that the variation of this, the UI here, it must be the same. UI must be the same across different observations of this XI. So, maybe you are considering XI, you have to get the same UI, even if you are considering XJ, that is another, another value of XI. Another value of x rather. So you take an example of one of the th one of the um, questions we've been going through that's about income and consumption. So when the household when the household income is around one thousand naira, the variation the UI must be the same even when the household income is one thousand five hundred naira, even when it is two thousand naira, even when it is two thousand five hundred naira. So that is the assumption of homoscedasticity. There must be equal variance of the error term across all observations, across different observations of the, the, of, of the independent variable, the regressor in question. So when you add this and this now, it simply means that we use this mean, this is our mean square. So this simply represents the variance. So this is the variance. Now, when you do not have equal variance of the error term across different observations, then you talk about heteroscedasticity. Heteroscedasticity simply, simply means that when you are considering, let's say, xi, then you have this as a variance. When you are considering maybe, let's say, x, x, j, then you have this as a variance. When you are considering, let's say, x, k, then you have this as a variance. So the variance is not the same across different observations here. So what the OLS assumes is that the variance of the error term must be the same across different observations of the regressor. That's simply what this assumption is talking about. Then we move to the next one. No autocorrelation. Autocorrelation simply implies relationship between or among the error terms. That is the disturbances. So there must be no autocorrelation. There must be no relationship. It is also called serial correlation. So no as serial no serial correlation must exist among the disturbances in question. So among the error term in question. Now why do we need to assume this? Why why is this why is this assumption valid? One of the things we said in the last class is that the average value of the error term must be equal to zero across all observation of x. That is, the mean effect of the error term on the expected value of y given x has to be equal to zero in the sense that the error term has to cancel out so, so that this y can be equal to this. And that is the goal of our regression analysis. So the goal is that we want this y to be equal to this, that is our estimated y, we want it to be equal to the true value of y. So this error term now, ui, must be equal to zero to achieve this. You know, from what we have here, that ui is 
y minus e y x e y given x r. So to make these two guys the same thing, u i has to be equal to zero. And when it is zero, then you can always bring this to the um, to the other side, and you have the y equals the expected value of y given x i. So that's it. Now this calculation implies that given different values of x, different values of the regressor in question, that the error term must have no relationship, no ciliar relationship. That is, they must not follow a, a specific pattern. Probably, okay, they are all going towards the positive direction, or they are not. They are all going towards the negative direction. So those that two um, scenarios must not must not exist. So it's either that one is either that they are. Some are going to the positive um, direction, while some are going to the negative direction, so that their average effect must be equal to zero. And that's what this uh, no autocorrelation is, uh, is talking about. So when there is autocorrelation, it simply implies that this is not valid. EUI, the, as the average value, the, the main effect of the other term on the dependent variable can never be equal to zero when there is autocorrelation. And that will give us, that will, that will give us problems in uh, analysis using the wireless. So the ordinary least squares method assumes that there's no autocorrelation, there's no severe correlation among the disturbances. So on to the next one now, number nine. Zero covariance between the error term UI and the independent variable or the regressor. That is, they must have no specific relationship. The two guys must have no specific relationship. And why is that? Why should we assume that? Now, the goal of regression analysis is to estimate the value or the, av the average value of the dependent variable or the regressor given the fixed values of the independent variable. And one of the reasons for the inclusion of this error term is to ensure that we capture all other variables that probably you cannot even imagine of. Or all other variables that we just want to use, probably to simplify, maybe in our assumption that okay, let's just use income as income only as a, as a determinant of consumption. Why we just include all other variables in the error term? Now, if there is a relationship between income and other variables in the error term, then it simply means we could have just maybe we could have used something, we could have used a better variable to explain um, the analysis. So, which means when income as when the regressor. When it has a relationship with this error term, then it simply means that some of the and uh, some of some of um, this xi the regressor is being explained by this error term. There are some values that there are some variables here that are almost like this. So the goal here is to test the individual effects of this error term of this error term rather and the regressor. The goal is to test their individual effects on the dependent variable. We get us now. So that is the goal of uh, regression analysis. There must be no relationship between the explanatory variable and the error term, so we can test their individual effects on the regression, and that will that will make uh, that will make our uh, our analysis valid. But if this guy as uh, if this guy is explaining this guy, then it is not possible to test their individual effect. It simply means you are testing the effect of this on this. Then even if you are testing the effect of this on the dependent variable, this guy is also being involved. And that, that, that's for you. That, that's for you. So it, we have to ensure that there is no relationship between the error term and uh, the regressor. Now, you see what I'm saying? That is, the expected value of UI, uh, UI and XI has to be equal to zero. The covariance has to be equal to zero. So there's a full note here. This is A. Let's check this note here. The covariance of ui and xi are trying to prove that mathematically to show that mathematically that it has to be equal to zero why is it valid this is the proof now the covariance and the variance of ui is the value of our ui minus the expected value of ui just as you have the variance of your normal regression function of, the, of, of your prf you have the variance as y minus e y given xi so also the variance of the error term is ui minus the total value of ui and also the variance of the xi independent on the independent of the reversal is xi minus the mean value of xi so when we take the expectation of everything the expectation has to be equal to zero okay now 
Let's expand now. We are combining two variances. That's for variance. That's the word for variance means two variances. So when we expand this bracket, recall. Let's do a little bit of linear algebra here. We have a minus b multiplied by x, x plus y. Then to expand this bracket, you have a multiplied by x plus y, and then minus b multiplied by x plus y. So also what we did there, ui multiplied by x minus xi minus x, uh, the expected value of x, the, uh, the, the mean value of xi, then also minus this guy times the, the other brackets. So that's, that, that's how it does this. We just expand, you open this up. Now, we've known that from our assumption, we've known that the a ui must be equal to zero. The mean value of ui must be equal to that is the average effect has to be equal to zero. So if this a ui is equal to zero, then I have zero here. Zero multiplied by everything is automatically zero. Therefore, I have the expected value of ui as in the expectation of ui into bracket alone, all this alone. Everything here has been nullified by the fact that this is zero. Alright, so we put it to zero here. When we expand through ui times xi is ui xi, then with the expectation, you have the expectation of ui xi minus ui times exi is ui times exi with the expectation here, and this is it. So it equals to zero. You also note again, since the, um, the mean value of ui is equal to zero, since this guy is also equal to zero again, therefore you have this minus 0 times exi is 0 so it equals to 0 finally you have your e ui xi equals to 0 so the expectation the covariance of ui and xi must be equal to 0 and that is what this assumption mind is basically talking about so there must be no relationship between the error time in question and the um, regressor so we can test their individual effects on the regression the last one we have is that there is no perfect multiple linearity, no perfect linear relationships among the explanatory variables. So we check through 7, 8, 9, you compare them that to 10. Here you are talking about the error term, here also you are talking about the error term, here also you are talking about the error term and the regressor. But here we are only talking about the regressors. So this number 10 assumption is included in the, um, in the OLS when you are talking about um, a regression analysis that is more than two, as in that is more than two variables, that is your multiple regression analysis, you are talking about this number 10 assumption. So the assumption here is that there is no perfect linear relationship between the, sorry, between or among the regressors in question. So if you have three different regressors, then there is no perfect linear relationship between your x1, x2, and x3. Now, let's check this footnote B. We have y equals, y is a function of x1, x2, and x3. This is the model in question. So, <clears throat> if x1, that is y, these are, these are regression, and we have three different, um, three different regressors, x1, x2, x3. And say this is our consumption, maybe the income of the, income of the consumers, um, the population, and also expedition of some other, some other, expedition of some other groups. So, <clears throat> The consumption of uh, the consumption of this household on probably a specified good is a function of this x1, x2, and x3. So if you have this x1 as equal to 2x2, that is there is a perfect linear relationship between these two guys. And also, if x2 is also perfectly equal to minus 5x3, it is perfectly related to x3. That is x2 is just minus 5 multiplied by your x3. Then you can always say from, by substitution that your x1 will then be, since x2 is minus 5x3, x1 will then be 2 multiplied by minus 5x3, and you have your x1 as minus 10x3. Now, if all this is valid, then why do you think you need to include x2 and x3 in your analysis of the effects of everything on this y? Since x1 is the same thing as x2, it has a perfect relationship with x2. It has a perfect relationship with x3, that is x2 and x3, since they are all included in x1. Then it doesn't make sense if um, someone includes x2 and x3. So the question here is why then do you need to include other variables in the analysis? 
So the goal is to test the individual effect of three or more uh, of three or more unrelated regressors on the regressor. That is the goal. So if one of the one of the regressor is is already explaining the other, then you don't need to include both. Just include one, then you find another variable. And this is that is what this assumption is, is talking about. That is, there is no perfect multiple linearity. There is no perfect linear relationship among the explanatory variables. So you can test their individual effects and arrive at a better analysis. Testing the individual effect of different regressors on the regression in question. So that brings us to the conclusion of our discussion on the assumptions of the OLS. In subsequent videos, we'll continue with the properties of the OLS estimators and also some examples about the two variable regression, regression analysis and also the multiple regression analysis. Alright, so if you have not subscribed, kindly do that and also click on the bell button to be notified of our further classes. In, in case you have any question, please, or any probably anything you, need, you want to add or anything that is not clear, kindly drop them at the comment section. So we should attend to every one of them. So thank you very much. See you next time.